Good morning students. Welcome once again to our civics class. We shall begin a new lesson of civics today. Lesson number 2, the Indian Parliament. Before we begin a new lesson, let's revise what we have learned in the previous lesson. In chapter 1, we learned introduction to the parliamentary system of government. We were also introduced to two forms of government. parliamentary and presidential system of government we were also introduced to the three branches of government legislature that is the body that makes laws executive which implements the laws and judiciary that provides justice we had also come to know that the central legislature that consists of the lok sabha the rajya sabha and the president forms the parliament let us revise all this with the help of a video every day we hear about the parliament somewhere or the other in tv channels newspapers from our parents etc but what is parliament the parliament is a super legislative body in the indian government legislative body what is that the legislative body is a group of people who make laws for the country But how is the parliament related to our life? Government and its ministry make decisions on our behalf about various things which are a part of our life, like transport, our education, healthcare, food, and even sports. But the parliament is bigger, and the government is a part of it. Look, the parliament consists of the president of India and two houses, namely the upper house, which is the Rajya Sabha or the Council of States. and the lower house which is the lok sabha or the house of people while on the other hand the government is formed by the party who gets more than half the seats and gets majority votes after the general election of lok sabha members of both these houses are called members of the parliament or mps so what does the parliament do exactly the parliament checks to see if the government is doing a good job or not and if they are not they can raise a question against it The period during which the house conducts its meetings is called a session. The parliament conducts three sessions each year: the budget session, the monsoon session, and the winter session. How do we contribute to parliament and its decisions? The country is divided into numerous constituencies. Each of these constituencies elect one person to the parliament. Once these candidates become part of the parliament, they become members of parliament. We elect the members of the Lok Sabha directly through general elections and the members of the Rajya Sabha indirectly through state legislative assemblies. So what did we learn about the parliament? The parliament is a super legislative body which makes laws for our country. The government is a part of the parliament and makes decisions for the people of country. The parliament is composed of the president, the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha. The parliament administrates the working of the government. By voting, we elect the members of the parliament directly or indirectly. That is why it is always important to cast a vote because it is our vote that makes up the country's parliament. Students, in order to conduct the general elections, that is the Lok Sabha elections, the states are divided into territorial constituencies. This division is based on the population. since the population of all the states is not the same the number of territorial constituencies and the seats allotted in the lok sabha house is also not equal some states hold more seats than the other states for example the state of maharashtra has 48 seats in the lok sabha house whereas goa holds two seats this is because the state of maharashtra is densely populated as compared to goa which is the smallest state of india let's study the first house of the parliament the lok sabha students the lok sabha is the lower and the first house of the parliament of india since the representatives to this house are directly elected by the people from the territorial constituencies during the general elections The elections to the Lok Sabha take place after every 5 years. These elections are also called as the general elections. Sometimes 
if the lok sabha dissolves before the term of 5 years mid term elections take place the maximum number of members to the lok sabha are 552 as stated in our constitution the members of the lok sabha are called as mps members of the parliament in order to include everyone even the deprived sections of the society in the governance there are seats reserved for scheduled caste scheduled tribes and the anglo indian community in the lok sabha in case if there are no representatives from the anglo indian community the president can appoint two members from this community find out who are the current representatives from the anglo indian community and stick their pictures in your notebook children my question is who is eligible to contest elections to the lok sabha are you eligible to contest elections to the lok sabha the answer is no why because the age criteria for any indian citizen to contest the election to the lok sabha is 25 years and other criteria is that the person should have sound mental health must be a citizen of india etc it is important that the person should have voted before children right to vote is an important fundamental right it is the basis of democracy an indian who has attained 18 years of age gets a right to vote let us watch an interesting video on the lok sabha the lok sabha or the house of the people is the lower house of the parliament of india it is called as lok sabha because its members are directly elected by the vote of the people through a general election of lok sabha it has a fixed duration of 5 years but can be dissolved due to any political economic or social issue its maximum membership is 550 out of which some seats are reserved for scheduled castes tribes and also if the anglo indian community is not adequately represented the president can nominate two members from the community to lok sabha the lok sabha is the powerful house of the parliament hmm powerful house why is that so the lok sabha is a very important part of the legislature branch of the country which contributes to making laws for the country any ordinary law needs to be approved by both the houses of the parliament the final decision is taken in a joint meeting of both houses where the decision of lok sabha is likely to win because of its large number of members than the rajya sabha so what are the other powers that the lok sabha has apart from legislative powers the lok sabha controls the finance of the country finance wow how is that a money bill has to introduce in lok sabha the government prepares the budget of an income and expenditure which has to be approved by the lok sabha so is there any other way where lok sabha influences the government and its ministers lok sabha can ask questions to council of ministers for their actions and controls them if the lok sabha passes a motion of no confidence with a majority vote against the council of ministers the council of ministers has to resign including the prime minister so the lok sabha is the lower house of parliament and consists of maximum 552 members including reserved categories and anglo indian community it plays important role in making new laws for the country budget money bills are controlled by it lok sabha can ask questions to council of ministers for their actions and controls them children i hope you must have understood what territorial constituencies are and we also learned a lot about lok sabha today we'll continue to learn more from this lesson in our next module now read the lesson and complete the notes that are given in the pdf file neatly in your notebook thank you children